All right, folks. So we've been playing with this radio for the past couple of days. It is the Retivis uh, branded iLunes HS4. This is a 10 meter radio. We did a modification to this where it opens up uh, 12 meters as well. Let me turn this thing on. And there you can see it's on a 12 meter channel that I programmed. And I'll have a link below to a video where we do that. You may see this radio for sale on different websites under different brand names. It's originally an Anytone radio, but in this case, it's rebranded by Retivis and marketed as the iLunes HS4. Before we get too far into this video, I did want to say I was contacted by the fine folks at Retivis and asked if I would do a video review of this radio. Of course, I said yes, I like to do video reviews and I like radios. So they sent this to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. If you are the type of person who is triggered by sponsored content on YouTube, I suggest you go watch some cat videos. Now that we got this out of the way, what we're going to do is we're going to connect this up to some equipment and we're going to test the spectral purity or the output emissions from this particular radio. I did want to point out that we did the modification to get to 12 meters, so we're going to do it here on A1. So we're on bank A, band A, whatever you want to call it, channel 1. And I think if I turn this thing up here, maybe it's, uh, and I start going backwards... Here we go, we are in some 10 meter frequencies and we're gonna test it on 10 meters as well, somewhere right around F35. Uh, we're gonna do this on FM modulation and high power, which I believe is somewhere around 30 to 40 watts. And in order to get this done, we're gonna use this giant contraption. I'll show you how we have it connected uh, when we get it connected. This is what I call my big ass attenuator. It's good for 100 watts and it does 40 dB of attenuation. This is a little ass attenuator. This one is 10 watts and 10 dB of attenuation. So combining the two of these, we're going to get 50 dB of attenuation coming out of this radio, which is about 100 watts, which should be enough attenuation to protect the front end of our tiny SA Ultra, which is what we're going to use to measure the spurious emissions. When you do something like this, make sure that the big ass attenuator is the one that's connected to the radio. That way, the bulk of the heat gets absorbed by the big one, and what passes through gets absorbed by the little one. All right, let's show you what we did here. So here's our radio. It's turned on and it's connected, and we guess we'll test 10 meters first. We have a power cable coming out. It's got a fuse on it, so everybody stay calm. This is running to my Astron power supply, which is supplying a continuous 13.8 volts. Here we have a piece of RG8X premium coaxial cable that's coming out of the back of the radio and then it goes into the big ass attenuator through a series of adapters to make sure everything fits nice that goes into the little ass attenuator which comes out into this little itty bitty piece of coax here and goes into our tiny SA Ultra now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug a USB-C cable in here I'm going to remote control it with the computer so you can get a better look at the screen and you don't have to stress your eyes uh, as I mentioned, we're going to do FM modulation on high power. So let me get uh, the software set up. All right, folks, we're back. And as you can see over here, I guess I should say over here, we got some fancy pants software running for our tiny SA so we can display our results. Okay, what I don't have is my stylus. So I'm going to be using this pencil. Please don't judge me too much for that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over to our tiny SA and we're going to configure it to do this particular test. So I'm going to hit this button or I'm going to hit the uh, screen somewhere and I get this menu. And what I want to do on this is I want to click measure. So I do that and I'm going to pick harmonic. And when I do that, I'm going to type in the harmonic frequency or the frequency of our fundamental, which is 28.255 megahertz. And now what it's doing is it's asking me for a span for each segment that we are going to sweep. And I'm going to just put in 28.255 megahertz. And we're done there. And then when the screen comes back on, which should be any second, you can see it's divided into those spans at 28.255 megahertz. The other thing I need to do is I need to account for my external attenuation. And we said that that was 50 dB. And so what I want to do is I want to go over here, and I think it's under level, and there's something called external gain, and I want to make sure I hit the negative sign. Do negative 50 times 1, and that'll give me negative 50 dB of attenuation in terms of external gain, which accounts for my attenuation. And so when I do that, what uh, you should be able to see here on the screen is, is that our noise floor is now just below negative 40 dBm. Prior to that adjustment, it was just below negative 80, I think is where it was. Maybe it was somewhere around there. Anyhow, what we're going to do now is have the 
here we go, the mic, and we're just going to key up and use the FM carrier and see what we see. So now we're keying up, and initially we do see some things that look awful harmonic-y, but they are going to disappear as the tiny SA gets itself sorted out. And when we do this, we see that our signal is around 46 dBm, which is about what we would expect for around 30 watts, I believe is the right number. Anyhow, we have no spurious emissions. So that means this radio is super duper clean on 10 meters. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust it, and we're going to go back to 12 meters. Okay, it took me a second to get right. I don't know why, but uh, here we are at 12 meters. I'll just show you real quick because people never believe me. So we're at 24.940. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over to the tiny SA and I'm going to reconfigure it because we've made changes. So I'm hitting this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and then I'm going to go to measure and then I'm going to go to harmonic. And this time I'm going to type in 24. 0 0.940 megahertz and it's asking me for the span 24.940 now you don't have to do the same size span you can do whatever span you want this is just what i do I hit megahertz here's our screen i'm going to have to come back and i'm going to go under level and i'm going to check our external gain and i'm going to reconfigure that for negative 50 and i'm going to hit ok and I'm waiting for my screen screen to refresh, and there it is. And here we go, keying up. And we're seeing the tiny SA sort itself out. And it looks like our power level is going to be a little bit lower, maybe not. It was right around 46 dBm. Now we're at about 45 and a half dBm. But again, it's clean as a whistle, and we are good. So I went back and I just did some fact checking for everybody's going to get upset because I had it wrong. Around 46, 47 dB is around 40 watts. So everybody just stay calm. The radio is putting out 40 watts FM on 12 and 10. That's going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond.